Welcome to the Tales of Success podcast, a show about Labradors and achieving training success. Hello from me, Vicky Sharp, and welcome to the Tales of Success podcast. In this episode, I want to share my thoughts and experiences on the subject of limiting the amount of time that you walk your Labrador puppy for. If you're listening to this, you've probably just got a puppy or you're probably going to be getting one soon. And if this is you, first of all, I want to start off by saying congratulations. You are going to have lots and lots of fun times ahead. Walking your new puppy is a necessity. It's something that you'll both really enjoy together. And the exercise is essential for your puppy. But you might be wondering, how far should I walk my dog and for how long? The general rule that does the rounds is the five minute rule. And the five minute rule suggests that you should only walk your dog for five minutes per month of their life. So if you have a three month old puppy, the advice would mean that they get walked for just 15 minutes. This theory means that the duration of your dog's walks increases with their age. Of course, anything that avoids your dog picking up short or long term injuries should be listened to. But this advice isn't always what is suitable for you and your Labrador. And the evidence behind the rule isn't as straightforward as some may think. This subject of how long or how far to walk a dog is often quite a divisive issue. And you'll hear lots of differing advice from owners, trainers, vets and other pet professionals. As an experienced owner and Labrador trainer, here is my take on it and the advice that I give to my students. I always advise that you allow your Labrador the amount of exercise that they need on a walk. If your dog needs to use up an abundance of energy, it's best to let them do it during a walk in a controlled environment where you can monitor and supervise them. The walk that they may need may last just five minutes. It may last an hour and it's going to depend on their energy levels, their mood, their previous exercise or activities and their health and the environment that you're in. If your Labrador doesn't get an opportunity to burn off their energy on a walk with you in a controlled setting, they will probably come home, run around the house and garden, jump on the sofa, run around in circles to get that release that they need. If they are zooming around your garden and jumping on furniture, they're more likely to cause damage to themselves or pick up injuries. So it would probably have been better to let them walk for longer or go further whilst you are in a controlled setting and environment with them. Now, I'm not here to rubbish the five minute rule by any means. It has its merit. It's a well-meaning way to reduce risk of injuries to a young developing dog. But as I've just pointed out, your Labrador can injure themselves when they get home if they feel that they've not had enough opportunity to release their energy. My preferred way is to give them the time that they need on a walk, but ensure you avoid situations where they can injure themselves. If you've got a young or adolescent Labrador, you need to avoid things that impact on their joints as much as possible. And you're going to want to limit their exposure to repetitive fast movements, such as chasing a ball over and over again. So things like a ball launcher would not be advisable because it's that repetitive fast movement. You're going to want to avoid their exposure to jumping from heights or running up and down steps. You'll want to avoid exercising your dog to the point that they are overtired or overstimulated. And you also want to try and restrict the amount of rough play with dogs or humans because we have no control. And I'm sure you've realized that dogs do like to kind of have that rough play and throw each other around. You want to avoid excessive running by allowing your dog an opportunity to rest and slow down when they need and want to. And also avoid walking or running on hard surfaces for prolonged periods. Give your dog a variety of surfaces to walk on and allow walking on grass or softer surfaces where possible. You know your Labrador better than anyone else and you're going to know if something feels wrong. If your Labrador has the energy to burn, then let them walk and enjoy your time together. Have fun, make it an enjoyable experience and don't worry about how long you're out. Don't be clock watching. Be guided by your Labrador and if they seem tired, bring the walk to an end and let them rest. Now it's time for a news flash. Dogs like a day off. They do not need to go for a walk every day and will probably appreciate a day off occasionally to relax indoors. Just like us humans, Sometimes we want to stay indoors and chill out. So give your dog the occasional day off and work their brain instead by playing games in the house or learning a new skill. If you have a Labrador with injuries or health concerns, you should always, always follow the advice given by the vet responsible for your dog's medical care. 
even if you've got other dog owners or trainers on Facebook telling you what you should or shouldn't do, the vet that is treating your dog knows best. So please do listen and take their advice. Have fun, enjoy your walks, regardless of how long they last, and keep developing strong bonds with your Labrador. Make those walks beneficial to you. Train on those walks, interact and have lots of fun. If you have any specific questions about this subject or anything else Labrador related, you can also join our Facebook community group and you can do that by following the link at talesofsuccess.com. Thanks for joining us. We hope that has been useful to you. But from me, all I want to finish off by saying is be caring, be consistent and be your Labrador's best teacher. I'll catch you on the next episode.